so I wanted to ask you, in your opinion, what you think um, in general terms of the energy sector uh, as a whole and what has, what has changed in the past couple of years um, and how you have adopted as an organization to those changes inter internally? Well, um, I think we only have to look around here and see how this area has grown here, especially last two years again. You know, we have all, or those of us who have been here for the last decade, we have seen also a period of time where this was really shrinking and shrinking year by year and fuel cells and hydrogen being almost neglected as an energy generation category. And I think here we see fundamental changes. Um, key macro trends, I think, are now driving the demand here for an alternative, clean, and efficient way of generating energy. And what, what are those trends? If you can explain it to those who are not familiar with the sector, who might not be as well-versed, what are those drivers? I think very generically here from a, a society, but also political angle, I think the key driver is uh, decarbonization, reduction of CO2. Second one is a, a, a more decentralized way of generating energy, of supplying power to individuals, to organize, say, to, to, let's say, an economy, to, let's say, government organizations. But then also um, the need of sustainable, dependable and reliable energy supply in all processes that are being digitized right now. So short summary, CO2 reduction, decentralization, and also digitization. And all this helps now bringing fuel cells back into the arena, so to speak. Um, we are, I think, having done this also for quite some time here, I think it's the first time in a decade we are experiencing um, tailwinds instead of headwinds here from a macro environment. And in terms of SFC Energy, what does this mean for you, for you guys as an organization? Because you primarily work within fuel cells, but yours are a little bit different than some of those others who are exhibiting here. So what application, what market applications um, does your technology address and where, where, where globally or, or regionally? Well, if you look back where this whole thing started off, we are one of the pioneers in, in this industry. And... Uh, what we realized pretty early in the process is that our customers do, do not necessarily need a fuel cell. What they need is power, a certain amount of energy in a certain application. And by providing them a hybrid system that is comprising a fuel cell as the energy generation unit, a battery as the storage unit, and the efficient and, and, and I'd say, um, uh, state-of-the-art uh, electronics to make sure this entire system is working. I think this helped us to, to commercialize our products, not pushing a technology into a sector, but addressing, let's say, a, a, a need for a functionality. And when we started it, I think it was key to go into markets where we could overcome some of the key hurdles of, of fuel cells being still significant cost. Um, and that's why we entered into markets where the customer benefit was simply higher than the cost hurdle. Which is really interesting because that is kind of different than a lot of um, other, other cases where you're not looking at other sectors as necessarily competitors. You're looking at more of an integrated energy approach and just finding a solution for the end user to meet their energy requirements and their zero emission targets. Is that correct? Yeah, I think what helped us to really sell our first product was not going against a solution like a battery. A battery is an excellent solution. If you need power off the grid for, say, 24 hours, there is an incumbent, and if this is combined still with a solar system, it can be extended in lifetime. Where really the fuel cell comes in is then when you have to cover weeks and a month, and then let's say year over year, reliable off-grid power, there the combination then 
of a fuel cell, a battery, and a solar system can be a very efficient hybrid. And very practically, I think if you are going out and talking to customers, it's always an easier sell if you tell somebody, well, um, I know you have already something that is pretty good for a, a certain period of time, but this, what I can offer you, is enhancing your existing infrastructure so people do not have to write off or, or, or take, let's say, accountability for wrong investment decisions. You're telling them what you have is good, but I make it better, which is an easier sell than just do the messianic technology push here. And in terms of your, your, your market, so you're based in Germany, you're a German, German company. Um, you do have headquarters and offices in, in Canada. Where is your majority of your, of your market in terms of your, pro your products, in terms of your, your clients and sales? Well, the company was founded and started here in Munich in Germany. We still have main operations here for our fuel cell development and production and naturally for core uh, corporate functions. Our electronics, we, we manufacture in the Netherlands as well as in Romania. And we have built up a strong presence in North America, predominantly for the oil and gas industry, but also now other, other industries out of Canada. Um, if you look regionally, uh, North America is our biggest market with about 40% of the revenue. Germany accounting for about 20 Asia with Singapore and India being, let's say, our most important markets. Japan just starting is about 10%, and then the remainder really goes into the EU and into Israel. Spread over different applications from what we call clean energy and mobility, which is backup power for whatever applications from surveillance applications to, let's say, uh, uh, backup power for the wind industry to our consumer segment, which was our original market, selling our EFOI fuel cells to campers and, and sailboat owners. Then defense and security, a key market that is uh, really, let's say, now taking off after, I would say, a 10-year period of business development. And then specifically now really backup power for specific industries. I mentioned oil and gas already, where we are now also entering with our new products based on hydrogen compared to our existing product fleet on, on direct methanol fuel cell technology. And that's really interesting because if you just said your, mar your predominant market share is, is in um, North America, predominantly in U.S. and oil and gas, but now you're shifting products and you're starting to look at hydrogen. Um, where do you see that in terms of the German applications for that in Germany and what are the opportunities for you and what, what do you see in terms of challenges? Like what do you need to, in order to be more predominantly based in, in Germany and get more back some of the market share in Germany? Well, Germany for us has been an extremely uh, uh, good basis here. I think what we found also in the difficult years where the markets were not really, let's say, demanding too much of our product, we still had a, a solid infrastructure here for subsidies, not only in basic R&D, but also really in commercializing products, bringing products into the market, which I think is a is unprecedented. Um, the other thing is naturally uh, with, a, with an engineering culture we have here and, and let's say the strong uh, um, DNA in terms of let's say productization and quality, a good base to build up let's say a high-tech product. But naturally we had to go where the customers are and so in North America I'd say oil and gas and defense are uh, I'd say simply the biggest potential markets. Um, if we now look into clean energy and mobility applications one of our big uh, initiatives now is to go to uh, Asia as well as uh, especially also China and Japan and on our defense a segment, naturally markets like uh, India with a lot of needs here, especially for, for surveillance uh, or reliable surveillance applications is, is one of our key target markets. It's really interesting to say too, because you said, um, you touched on a couple points, the global markets, but also um, the targets within those, within those organizations, those, sorry, those 
um, countries that have been driving your changes as an organization, driving your product development, and driving um, your launch of, and deployment of new products. Um, I'm assuming that the surveillance product right here is one of the new ones. Do you want to talk about it a little bit for those that don't know anything about it? I don't know anything about it. So. Well, that's obvious here yeah, a, a showcase, and we're always proud to bring something to wrap your arms around it. At the end, this is a, this is a surveillance robot developed with our partner in, in Singapore, a company called Oneberry Technology, just elected to the top tech companies in, in Singapore. We have started to develop uh, border uh, surveillance equipment together with this partner, combining an, an excellent uh, uh, um, camera technology with dependable uh, off-grid power based on our E4 fuel cells. Originally, it was all stationary. We have equipped the whole borderline of the country here with more than uh, 350 uh, uh, installed uh, uh, off-grid camera systems powered by fuel cells. I think a one-timer in, in, in the fuel cell uh, uh, development so far. And this now is the more versatile mobile application for indoor, outdoor. What does the fuel cell bring here? It simply brings range. It helps to, uh, um, to avoid dependence here from, from manual intervention. So you can run it here for weeks and months without manual intervention. And at the end, it goes from not only, let's say, it goes from a, a, a border perspective, means protection here of border lines to normal construction sites to events, including large industrial players, especially also out of the automotive field, are looking at it right now as simply a standard uh, surveillance application being installed in, let's say, large areas of manufacturing. And where do you see that in terms of growth over the next couple of years, the, the, the automated surveillance in terms of manufacturing and security? Because this is quite, quite new and exciting, really. Can you kind of talk about how you see yourself in, in positioning in terms of the future of this space? Well, in our, in our clean energy segment, this is one of the fastest growing sub-segments where people simply go out and install, let's say, cameras, as I mentioned, from construction sites to events. Um, at the end, um, it is, again, um, facilitating here uh, simply a dependable uh, uh, surveillance work means it's a kind of a digitalization step where you simply have imaging technology that is constantly uh, uh, being powered here by a clean and efficient uh, uh, energy source. Um, this is a segment that I think, especially on the commercial end, is fully, let's say, underestimated. It's not just a, a, a government topic to, let's say, put up cameras here on, on let's say, the borders of, a, of an individual country. It's really, let's say, something that is now in day-to-day -day use. And why not hooking it to the grid? Because it's simply too expensive to have a grid connection in at each of those locations, and some of those locations are changing and moving, talking about construction, this disappears at a point. And so therefore, a, a pretty decent uh, uh, segment that has significant potential here. So are you in a, in a stage in terms of organization where you're um, manufacturing these right now and they're ready for commercial deployment? And do you partner with anyone locally to do this? Or is there opportunities for anyone to get on board or is there any, any opportunities for anyone, particularly in the audience here, that could... Well, always open to uh, find new, let's say, uh, uh, partnerships. Um, the predominant target here naturally is to attract users, means we are out here marketing it also to especially large industrial organizations. Um, we see or we have already very concrete discussions ongoing, so we expect this to, let's say, at least pay part of our bills here in Hanover by doing some of the sales here. Great. Um, I'm going to open it to the floor for questions. Does anyone have any questions regarding the technology or questions um, at all regarding SFC Energy? Anyone at all? 
Okay, um, well, if you think of your own questions and would like to follow up directly, um, SFC Energy is located in booth D45, it's just behind you over here. Um, I would like to thank you for joining me on stage and thank you for your time. Again, please go visit their booth, they're just behind you, um, and they can answer more questions. Thank you very much.